in the beginning, God created man. And for man, God created a companion. And every day, Adam and his companion would play games. They did tricks. Sit. <sighs> they even played tricks. <laughs> now, on one particular day, while strolling through the garden, the dog was going about his business as usual when he was interrupted by an odd sound. <laughs> huh? Can it be that Adam's found someone else? You can call me Eve. Well, you can. This, in fact, made the dog very jealous, so he approached Adam. <gasps> but his mind was elsewhere. Now, a clever dog like this one knows when it's time to take some action, but he needed a plan to get rid of Eve to be back with Adam. And then it hit him. <laughs> so he presented it as a gift. Have a bite, dearie. And she accepted it gladly. For me? Mmm, <laughs> it's good. No! Okay, who ate the fruit? Snake! <laughs> and so they were cast out of the garden to live their lives in hell on earth. Hey, boys. Don't wait up. I'll be working late tonight. Oh, no spots on the dishes this time. I don't like spots. Rarely I don't. And here we are today, but at least we're still together. Ow, ow! Some things never change. Jerk. I'm a kung fu master. Uh, I'm sparring with a blonde woman and easily take her out. I throw her down to the mat and we start Greco-Roman wrestling. I have her pinned, see? She's on her back and I'm holding her knees up around the sides of her head. She smiles and said, My butt smells like Pop Rocks. Hey, everybody. It's me, the champ. How you doing? What do you think of my swordfish? I just got her back from the taxidermist. I caught this little beauty on my second honeymoon with Mrs. Champ in Hawaii. You know, the champ loves to fish. Last spring, we flew to a fishing lodge up north. Had a great time, mainly because of our guide, Snapper Bob McClure. Well, Snapper Bob took great care of us and made sure we didn't lift a finger. All we had to worry about was catching fish. This one beautiful morning, Snapper was teaching me how to fly fish. Even the champ needs to learn a couple of things, so kids, stay in school. Snapper was an excellent teacher, and I learned all about the various subtleties of this delicate art. I was really enjoying the majesty of the great outdoors. Snapper Bob was too. I started casting about in deeper water, and it was at that moment the cold springtime lake water made me feel the call of nature. So I said, excuse me, Snapper, but I gotta take a leak in the woods. And he said, okay, champ. You want me to hold your rod for you while you go? I said, pardon? He said, do you want me to hold your rod for you while you go? Well, I snap. I lose it. I overreact. I head fake him with a 20-pound Chinook. Then I insult him with a flying jackhammer and a surprise for his mother with a barrage to the solar plexus. He's so teed in butter, it's starting to fry. How's that, I ask him. Is that, do you want me to hold your rod while you're going up for you? Ever since I've been the champ.
Weird Ass Cartoons Weekend continues. Mamma mia, this is all my fault. If only I had been nicer to my monkey. <laughs> Monkey, don't worry. Just breathe normally and you'll be just fine. Monkey, you are going to be great. A gentleman launching will commence in one. Three, two, one. Launch it. It's up. It's up. the most evil man in America. Charles Manson defends his title against diabolical upstart Marilyn Manson. Tonight, Don. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Celebrity Deathmatch, the all-star slugfest where anything, and I mean absolutely anything goes. I'm Johnny Gomez here with Nick Diamond. That's right, Johnny. And we got a special event scheduled for this evening. Two big talents, two great champions, one spectacular death match. In the red corner, he's fighting out of New York, New York, and will be utilizing a rare and highly developed fighting skill known only as ha ka Please welcome heavy metal enthusiast, Marilyn Manson. In the blue corner, his opponent, weighing in at a sultry 130 pounds and wearing what looks like a white disposable diaper, fighting out of San Quentin Prison, California, with a style which can only be described as pure, uninhibited madness. Please welcome Charles Manson. All right, step in, gentlemen, step in, please. Okay, now, I've already explained the rules to you in the dressing room. I expect a tough, clean fight Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the blue corner? Any questions from the red corner? Let's get it on! Here's the bell, and Charles Manson's not wasting any time. Oh, a thunderous right hand from Marilyn sends Charles reeling back against the ropes. That's gotta hurt. Charles taking a moment to recover now. And he's back on his feet. Charles moves in close, now working a body, and it looks like... Oh! Headbutt sends him down again. Marilyn really letting him know who's in charge. This is what the crowd came to see, Johnny. I can't agree more. Charles off the ropes. And he's got Marilyn in his 
stranglehold. He's sizing him up now, looking for an opening. He, he bit him. I can't believe it. Charles taking a chunk out of Maryland's left shoulder. Referee Mills Lane sizing up the situation now. Okay, two points for biting. I'm going to deduct two points for biting. How you doing? Can you go on, son? You want to go on? And the fight will continue. Charles on the attack again, but Merrill is ready for him. <laughs> Charles is down. And he's out. And the winner is Marilyn Manson. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Yet another wrinkle in the fabric of deathmatch history unfolds before your very eyes. I'm Johnny Gomez for Nick Diamond saying, good fight, good night. Tune in next time when Celebrity Deathmatch continues. I wake up because something's wrong. Shuri notices I have something sticking out of my mouth. I grab it and pull out long strands of hair from deep in my throat. <laughs> It's her hair, and though she doesn't look like she's missing any, I've managed to swallow lots of it. <coughs> We're both a little freaked out, and I look at her, wondering just how the hell it all got there. <coughs> Weird ass cartoons beheaded your way. Once, when I was with Granny and Uncle Harry, Harry was going to the barber. Granny thought I could go too, and after a while, Harry agreed as well. We walked there. It was a sunny day. Harry took out his new sunglasses he just bought. I couldn't try them on, but I could feel the frames if I was careful. These cost a bundle, you know, said Harry, putting them on proudly. When we got to the barber's, Harry was ushered straight to the chair. He put his sunglasses into his shirt pocket and got a cape put over him and a bit of tape around the neck. The barber, a young girl, started washing his hair. Harry closed his eyes and smiled. It didn't take long. In the meantime, I had a chance to look at some of the men's magazines the barber had. Cool. When the girl had finished washing Harry's hair, it was time to dry it. So she went off to get the blow dryer. Robin, have you seen my sunglasses? Asked Harry, looking around. In your shirt pocket, I said. Good, said Harry. And worked them out from under his cape. The barber came back and started blow drying Harry's hair. What a pop! It almost killed Harry. Pervert, dirty old man, rapist! shouted the hysterical barber and ran off to get the manager. When Harry came to, he showed the girl, without the cape, what he'd been doing. Then she finally calmed down. Then everything was okay. Harry got a cup of coffee and a donut before we left. And he didn't have to pay. The sun was still shining when we went home.
Oh no, the toilet. The toilet bowl is full of excrement. More matter than one person can generate, which is pretty repulsive because it means people have been ganging up on the poor pot without flushing. I hit that chrome baby and swirl those brown bad boys out to sea. They all go except for one dark long one. It's hiding under the rim, so I don't quite see it at first. Oh, from the looks of it, from the look and smell, I can tell it belongs to my grandmother. It's Ultra City 6060! Mr. Jackson, we officially present your new home in space. We hope you'll be happy and undisturbed in this secret refuge thousands of miles from where prying eyes and shameless opportunists will ever find you. What a dump! Where's the Ferris wheel? Where are the fireworks? You're all fired! Oh, Mike, like it's so hot when you're bossy. Please let me stay here with you. Get off, Lisa Marie! Cootie spray! S -s -s <laughs> oh, my God! Jeez. What are you gawking at, you parasites? Now get the hell off my asteroid! Well, at least this Hubble is a private waterfall. I'm bad. I'm bad. <laughs> what the? Enemy ship approaching, Michael. What the heck? Damn it! How the hell did they find me? Every time I try to get a little old-fashioned naked privacy, some damn suit gets in on my scene. Verifying Jackson's ship approaching. Jackson? Oh, God, no. Captain hailing us. ID positive. One Jackson Tito. Hey, Mikey, baby, what's going on? You're not Tito. No, man, it's me. I'm white now, too. You look ridiculous. What the hell do you want? Oh, now, Michael, come on now. Let's cut a record. It'll be fun. Bug off, you leech. Oh, come on now, man. I need a hit. Yeah, I'll give you a hit. Three Jackson ships approaching. What? Identifying Germain, Marlin, Latoya. Michael, we want to record with you for old time's sake. Latoya, what happened? Uh, I went for the budget job. It didn't work out so good. But we're white. Yeah. Yeah. It's true, Michael. Quincy Jones. In the future, everybody's white. Right on. Right on. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Come on, let's cut some tracks, Mikey. Shut up, you suck, Jermaine. I do not. Remember, torture. Ah, eat my blasters, you words! Hold on, Jimmy Osmond! Aye, aye, Captain. Destiny. New Jackson ship approaching. Identifying Andrew. Andrew? Remember when we were in the Senate together, Michael? We were never in the Senate together, you liar! Listen, Michael, I had an idea for a film. Nice work, Michael. Proper. So, um, uh, listen, uh, do you have a second? Hmm? Like, you know, I was kind of working on a song. I, I thought, you know, if you wanted, we could... Anyway, it, it goes kind of like this. It, it's super. Boom. Chicka, chicka, boom. Boom. In space, everything is cold. In space, nothing does grow old. You, no, your love does not grow old in space. Doing keyboard. Okay, some beats right. Space is where I want to be, baby. What are, you, what are you doing, Michael? Okay, wait. But All right, check this out. In space, you. Make it time.